please, please join, join us in saying, Life is a gift for which we are grateful. We gather in community to celebrate the glories and the mysteries of this great gift. Hi, my name is Chris Holt Jablonski, and it is my great joy and privilege to serve you as your minister and to welcome you to another wonderful worship here with First Church. I'm so glad that you're here for a number of reasons, but largely, especially because this is one of my favorite services of the year, the Holy Family Service. This is in the beginning of the holiday time, in between Thanksgiving and Hanukkah and the solstice and Christmas and the new year. We like to celebrate all kinds of families. One of the most beautiful things about Unitarian Universalism is that as we honor the inherent worth and dignity of every person, we also honor the inherent worth and dignity and beauty of every family, and we celebrate that here today. So we've invited a bunch of the families from the congregation, and we'll hear a little bit from each of them. Each of them has an object that they'll share that sort of speaks to some of who they are as a family. And then at the end of every one of their sharings, we all have an opportunity together to say, we honor and bless this family. And you'll be able to say it there and know that hundreds and hundreds of other people all around will be blessing these same families and in turn also your family. So welcome to this service. But before we go, I uh, want to lift up just a couple things uh, happening and on the way. The first is our new round of small group ministry groups are kicking off. They're going to be in January and you can sign up for them now in the uh, worship announcement with the email that probably brought you this link. There'll be a link there, and we can also put it in the comments in the description of the video. So do please uh, check out those, and you can sign up. A lot of people have already signed up, and it's a great opportunity to get to know some folks here in the church that you don't already know, and to reflect and to deepen together. Uh, so do please check that out. And then we also have this year's uh, holiday social action holiday gift fair, which we usually fill this room. I'm up on the stage in the parish hall. Usually we fill this room. We have vendors from all over the place. We're doing it a little bit differently where we're sending you links. Um, so there's going to be also in lots of places in the Unitarian and the email that brought you this maybe, and we'll put a link in the description. Uh, Sarah Oaklander and other folks have been hard at work getting us connected to lots of the vendors um, who sometimes would come here. And it's just another wonderful way to help support some folks in this moment and do a little holiday shopping that helps further the causes that we love and care for and also helps, you know, nurture small local artists. So do please uh, check that out. And lots of other stuff happening and on the way. So we look forward to seeing you soon. But for now, for this beautiful time stretched out before us, come, let us worship together.
Hello, First Church. Hi, my name is Baird Klima Smith, and this is my family. There's myself. I've been recently divorced um, from Betsy Klima Smith, as many of you may know her, and together we share two children. Um, there's Isaac Klima Smith, the older one, and he is now in graduate school in Illinois. He's a trans man, actually. Some of you may remember him as Sophie when he was a kid, and then there's the younger son, and that's David Klima Smith, and you'll still see him around. I coach him in soccer. He's in fifth grade now. And Betsy lives about half a mile away from us. Isaac's out, as I said, is out in Illinois. So David goes back and forth between our houses. He can bike back and forth if he wants to, or we'll drive him. Um, the object I wanted to share with you today is something um, that my folks used to have above their bed when I was a boy. It's a mola, is that, what that kind of art form is called. It's made by overlapping pieces of fabric. And in this case, this particular mola is of two lovebirds. And it hung above my parents' bed and they had a huge uh, llama fur bed covering and the, th uh, my, the three si siblings, you know, the three of us, would come in on the early mornings and Saturday mornings and jump on top of their bed and snuggle into the soft, soft fur. And that picture always hung above their bed. And when Betsy and I got married, my folks gave us the picture and it hung above our marriage bed for many, many years. And of course, when we were divorced, uh, Betsy gave me the photo back. It's no longer over my bed, but it's in my living room. But it reminds me of my parents' love for each other. My dad um, takes care of my mom now. She's got early onset dementia and he has just become incredibly patient with her and loving and it's just an inspiration to see that kind of um, unconditional love. And that's my family. Thank you for listening. Hi, I'm Margaret Dunn. I'm Gemma. How old are you, Gemma? Six and five. You're six? How old are you? Oh, what's your name? <laughs> Isa. How old are you? Six. And my name is Eladi. We're the Dunn Bermudas family, and this is Cisco chewing my uh, elastic band, and this is Rafi, and we live in Belmont. And let's see, what are some of our the things that make us a family or about our family? Oh, we have a puppy who likes to bite. Um, we love pillow fights. And you love Christmas. What is, what is it you love? Christmas. Christmas? I Me love too. Christmas, not Me mom. Too. I love Christmas too. You love Christmas too? And what about gymnastics? Yeah. Mom. And I love... <laughs> I love Pilates, and um, I'm a social worker and a Pilates instructor. And I love photography and woodworking. I like to go with my mountain bike out in the woods from time to time. And we do a lot of hikes with the dogs. And our object today is Alexa. Mom. And we picked Sorry. Alexa because we love to do dance parties, family dance parties. Alexa, play. Alexa, play. Wait, why don't we turn around to yellow? No, what's what's the one? Surrounding. All right, you two. You two hold it. 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 So this is the time in our service where we invite forward an offering to help support the good work of the church and also uh, some of our partners out in the wider world. For all of the month of December, we're very, very happy to be sharing all of our offerings with the Grow Clinic, which is a long-standing partnership that we've had at the church. The Grow Clinic helps support families with children who have been diagnosed with failure to thrive. 
It's a beautiful, wonderful organization, and we're so proud to have this long partnership with them. So as always, you can donate by going to uubelmont.org slash giving, uh, and you can set up a worship donation there, or you can also text the number in the, de in the description of the order of service. Especially now, your generosity makes so much possible, both in the church and in the wider world. So thank you for all you're about to give. Hello, we're the Kurat Morgans. I'm Ran. I'm Dulcia. Um, our family is the two of us. We have been married for a little over 10 years. And um, the two of us and sort of a long list of pets that have come and gone um, in the time that we've been together and also a few foster children. Oh, our item. Our item is these mugs, these mugs. Um, would you like to describe why we chose these mugs? Sure. When we first started dating, uh, we connected over enjoying a cup of hot tea. Uh, and we would have tea in the morning instead of coffee and have a cup of tea in the afternoon. And there was just a lot of tea to the point that um, we gave tea away as a part of our wedding. Uh, thank you gifts or favors. And... A friend made a wedding quilt and invited people to participate and I think we had like six squares that were just cups of tea. Uh, and over the past year, nine months, the pandemic, we have very enthusiastically converted to coffee. Uh, but regardless of what the beverage is, we enjoy our mugs and we enjoy our routine and it has always been uh, a time in which we can slow down a little bit and connect with each other. Anything to add? No, do you want to have Twig say hi? This is Twig. No. <laughs> this is one of our family members.
My name is Jane Fisher, and I am here to talk about the Fisher family, um, and family in general, I think. Um, I'm going to start with this picture as a my first object. I'm going to do two. Um, this is me and my husband and our first two children when Johanna was about one years old and Seth was about seven. Um, and you can see Kurt in the middle and holding Johanna on his lap. And I think it's very telling that he is in the middle because I feel like he was very much central to our family. And of course, this year we lost him. So having the center of your family drop out is intense. Um, changes us all in lots and lots of ways. I like to think that Kurt passing as he did March March 30th very very suddenly um, meant, means that he did not suffer as much as he might have if he had continued to live. I'll never know that for sure but I think there's some good evidence that that might be true because he did have Alzheimer's which just is a progressive disease. But any rate you look at it, it's um, a major loss for all of us, and it's been hard, even even if it did reduce his suffering. So we're starting a new life. We're starting. I, I am particular in starting a new life because I'm alone, and my my kids are adults. So hopefully they are able to move on, and I know they're hurting too. But um, we're hanging with each other the best we can. So our family's different right now. The other other aspect of family I really want to talk about is um, sisterhood because my mom was one of three sisters. This is a photo, I mean, a, a painting of two sisters. I hope you can see it. Old, old painting. Um, my mom was one of three sisters. Uh, her younger sister, who was closest to her, um, also had had two daughters and my mom had two daughters my sister and I and I had two daughters so there are sisters in three generations and I have uh, very much um, appreciated and enjoyed watching my mom and her sisters and their relationships and I've also really enjoyed um, of course the relationship I have with my sister who calls me most days especially now since I'm alone and I celebrate and encourage my my two daughters to be good sisters to each other because there's a lot of power in, in that particular family uh, bond. All right, I think that's about right timing. And uh, thanks for listening. Hi, my name is June Lattimore. This is my son Lucas. He's 10. Hi. We were asked to talk a little bit about our family traditions um, and I was at a loss at first to kind of figure out like how we, you know, what we were going to use. Um, so I'm an only child and uh, I was raised in Massachusetts, uh, my parents are from the South. My uh, father was military, but I wasn't a military brat. My father traveled a lot of tours of duties, but I stayed local. Um, I wasn't raised with aunts and uncles and cousins. Um, my only living grandparent when I was born um, was my mom's mom, and she that relationship was very uh, extrained for uh, most of my childhood, and I didn't know my dad's family at all. Um, a lot of it was because my mom didn't like or didn't trust them. I'm not really quite sure which, um, and I'm not sure how much of it had value or merit uh, versus just some of the results of my mom's own paranoias uh, from childhood trauma from um, just 
bad experiences and then also just um, she had some behavioral health issues that were not uh, diagnosed until late in life. So it was just me and my mom for a great period of time. And my son is an only child. Um, and though he is biologically mine, um, his DNA is from a donor, which is uh, many, much of the history was unknown to us and won't be known to us or can't be known to us until he's 18. So it's up to me and him to make traditions. So in figuring out what we were going to use, I decided to, I picked this bowl. <laughs> this bowl um, in my home growing up when I was a kid was a bowl that was used to, it was the egg bowl. It was an egg, it was a bowl where all projects in the kitchen began. It was where the egg whites for the meringue was beat for, uh, the egg whites for, um, was beat for the meringue pie, um, for eggs for breakfast, uh, eggs for uh, chicken salad, tuna salad, um, potato salad, any particular, any salad you could possibly uh, make. Um, when my mom passed and I was cleaning out her house, the home that I had not lived in for 30 years prior, when I saw this bowl, it gave me fond memories of cooking in the kitchen with my mom on the holidays. Um, and so I grabbed it, and now my son, who likes to cook, actually mostly bake, we now use this bowl for all of our projects, whether that's going to be pancakes, or cookies, or protein balls, which actually don't have eggs, but we still use the bowl. Um, so that is our tradition. I'm hoping that he will pass this on to his kids um, long in the future and have memories of cooking or baking with his mom. Okay. Happy holidays. give thanks for molas of lovebirds hanging over our parents' beds, for snuggles under llama fur blankets. We give thanks for egg bowls, for the beginning moments of pies and salads, and now pancakes and cookies, protein balls, and more. We give thanks for Alexa and family dance parties, for playful dogs and mountain biking, for all that holds us close. We give thanks for warm mugs, for tea and coffee, and all the vessels that bring them to us. 
We give thanks for all that makes us family. For all the visions of family we once held and might be unfulfilled. For all the possibilities and potentials of family. And the reminder that each and every one of our families are whole and holy, beautiful and good. So let's say one last time for all of us and the family we create together, whether you're one of our core members who've been in the church for many decades, or if you are one of our newly added folk in the widest embrace of the church in Wisconsin or Texas, California or Germany, all of us here together in this wild moment we are facing. We are held all connected in this powerful love. And so, one last time, I invite you to say, we honor and bless this family. So much love to you all. Amen. I recently spent seven weeks in England organizing my mother's move from our home of 55 years into residential care. I am very grateful for the support of First Church community that made a difficult time a little easier. While I was there, I was also planning on playing the organ at the church in which I grew up and sending back some recordings for our services. But the national lockdown in England put a stop to that almost as soon as I arrived. Today's postlude is probably the first piece I played on that organ when I was 14. It is by the virtually unknown English composer Morris Green, who was a contemporary of Handel. What you will hear today is a computer realization, but the sounds exist on both organs. And if you close your eyes and listen with the imagination, you could be in either sanctuary. The pictures are of the church where I first fell in love with choral music and where both my father and I served as choir master. <laughs> 